Okay. Wow. This is interesting. All right, guys. I have just spent the last almost one hour trying to get on. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see what's happening here. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening to everyone. Uh, we are 301. Let me just make sure we're up on Facebook and YouTube, and then we're going to jump right into it. I do apologize for the late start, but this was well beyond my control. My internet was just going in and out and giving me a bunch of crazy readings. So let's just make sure we're up and live. Yes, we are. We're up and live. Bingo. Okay. All right, here we go. All right. All right, okay. All right, all right, so we're back at it. Okay, folks, as promised, as promised, we are at that pivotal point. We have done our two uh, pre-courses on uh, spiritual warfare, and again, all leading up to this particular teaching here on there is a set time for deliverance. There's a set time for deliverance. And I'm just going to wait for us to get to like about 600. We're at 413 right now. And then once we get to 600, we will jump right into this. Today is going to be, this, tonight actually is going to be very interesting because we're about to discover uh, some interesting components here. We're going to have, this is going to be one of three parts. Uh, so we're going to end this on today's what, Tuesday, the Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday night will be the last night of it. I had to do it in three parts because we're going to be covering different aspects of this particular teaching. And again, we're dealing with uh, deliverance being a set time. And what that basically means is kind of going to dispel the, the foolishness that we... Someone someone called me today. And we were just having a... This is after I did my show. And we were having a light, a light conversation initially, but it got a little heated, <laughs> not in a bad way, it got a little heated uh, afterwards. <clears throat> anyway, I was asked, they said to me, well, Kevin, uh, no offense, but why is it that you always, I would say always, but you're, you're coming down on the, the, the prophets and so on, so harsh. So immediately when he said that, I, I got a little irate. I recognized it, so I, I held back until he was done with what he had to say. say. So I said to him, I said, you finished? I said, can I answer you? I said, now let's be clear, and I didn't interrupt you, so don't interrupt me, all right? Because I will make my point very clear here. I said, the problem we have with the church, with Christians, with believers, is that they're so used to the acting that they don't even know when they're acting. I said, think about this for two seconds. I said, you're a believer. I'm a believer. And because we're so used to the believer circle, we don't ever think about people on the outside. And I say, that's what the problem is. I say, think about it. There are people on the outside who are contemplating giving their life to God. Just think about this for two seconds. All right? And all of this mumbo jumbo they see, every second they see some prophet, some evangelist, somebody making a prophecy. Now remember, they want to get close to God. They want a relationship with God. And they're saying... These people are saying, oh, God is going to, Jesus told them that he's coming in the next two weeks. Uh, some kind of tsunami is going to come here or whatever the case may be. And I say, now let me be clear here. There are true prophets who make true predictions and they come to pass. But when you have almost 70% of people coming up talking foolishness. Now remember, because you're in the Christian circle, you're trained to defend them no matter how no matter how inaccurate and how often their inaccuracies are. You're I, I don't do that. You're trained to do that. Here's how I'm thinking. These jokers every two seconds saying this foolishness. These people are you who want to come to the kingdom of God, but they, they don't want to come because they're saying God can be real if these representatives of him are always giving these fake prophecies. It's almost like the, the story about the boy who kept crying wolf. He keeps thinking, the wolf is coming, the wolf is coming. So everybody's running out there with their guns and weapons and so on. Until one day when he cried wolf and the wolf truly came that nobody paid attention to him. 
So from your perspective, from your religious circle, from your limited uh, understanding of your little circle, you don't see outside of it. I see it because I sit with them every day. I talk with them every day. I talk with sinners as well as Christians alike, but more so the unbelievers who already had challenges with Christianity, who already had challenges with the representatives of Christ. Then they're watching your people, because they don't belong to me, your fake prophets come up there, make predictions. They're watching them come back now and says, oh, uh, we're still going to stick to the prophecy, but it's just that, you know, God had mercy or always an excuse. Put yourself in that position. So what I am saying that is because you need a Kevin Ewing. You need someone who doesn't have any affiliations to the so-called apostolic, the covering, and all of this mumbo jumbo that have nothing to do with preparing and bringing souls to the kingdom of God. You need a real person like me who's going to tell those from the outside looking in, do not pay no attention to them. They are not of the body of Christ. And here is the scripture to prove it. The scripture says, if one makes a prophecy and it does not come to pass, he or she is not of God. So we don't have to be judging all Christians are like, ma'am, sir. Don't pay no attention. There's a scripture for them. Now, those whose prophecies are coming to pass, those who are preaching from the Bible, they're the ones who you need to pay attention to. So I had to tell my friend, you're the, you're the average believer. You're the seasoned believer who have been caught up in the cycle of Christendom, and you, you, you live a form of God. You're satisfied that you claim to be saved, and you just go along with the program. But Kevin Ewing don't do that. And that's why I walked away from the, the so-called building almost 10 years now, because I, I got tired of that song and dance. I got tired of the deception, the actors and the actresses, and God is saying this, and, and I hear God, I got sick of it. So I understand where they're coming from. So I will not be part, neither parcel of that nonsense. I will not be in fear on the day of judgment. I stand before my Savior to give my account. I wouldn't have to worry about, oh, well, God, I didn't realize I was playing games with these people. I mean, after all, no, I'm not going to do that. So I tell him, if if you have a problem with that or anything that I do, then why do you foolishly punish yourself? Why do you follow me? Why why do you watch my programs? Because you, you give me a whole cadre of what I do. So clearly you're finding something interesting what I say. What you're upset about is that I'm not taking the baton of nonsense and following you. That's not going to happen. And I'm not going to lead anybody astray telling them lies, telling them they have to pay for miracle, tell them they have to drink miracle water, telling them they got to wallow on the ground and scream out because demons and them and the deliverance minister haven't taken an order for the Chinese restaurant while he's delivering them. I'm not going to do that. So if you have a problem with that, sir, then why don't you just carry on smartly? You don't have to listen to me. But I'll tell you this, though, you will not change what I'm doing. Let me be clear here. That will not happen. So get lost while I try to bring people into the kingdom of God. So get out of that garbage. I had to set him straight. Don't you try that. What are you talking about? No, man. Everybody want to tell you how to run your program. Everyone want to tell you how they're not bringing nobody to Jesus Christ. In fact, they're running them from Jesus Christ because every week their seed asking gets higher and higher. They're pushing people out of, out of the kingdom of God. I mean, literally grabbing them by their drawers and just flinging them on their head because they don't have the right seed. So you see, it's nothing. it has nothing to do with Christianity anymore. It has nothing to do with being saved anymore. It has to do with the selfishness of men and women who have no heart. You know why? Because everyone's doing it. So Kevin, you're the oddball. How dare you preach to these people and don't give them an invoice? Are you crazy, Kevin? No, 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 you're crazy. So get out of here, that nonsense. So don't talk no fool to me bunch of devils. I don't know to do with y'all. All y'all all on the road to hellfire, deceiving the people of God with apostolic juice and all this foolishness. But again, I always say this, I don't blame you no more. You, you, you have already proven you're a habitual serial robber, but the people who foolishly entertain your nonsense simply because they don't know the word of God. Okay, so we are at 877. Let's get started. So our topic tonight and for the next two nights is there is a set time for deliverance. And in a nutshell, here's what I'm saying here. I'm saying to you that in order for God to be God, 
and that is to be in control of everything, to, to be aware of everything, to have things in order, even though life may appear to be in disarray or disorder. For example, we're looking at the tragedies or the, the stuff in, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the volcano, and, and our prayers are with those people. But as devastating as that is and things will become, make no mistake, God is in order. And I'm going to explain that to you. You see, <clears throat> you can't take your little world, and because you don't have any control over it, you think that now is an indicator that the entire world is out of control. If that were the case, then God wouldn't, he, he, he wouldn't be all-powerful. All-powerful or sovereign will mean that he anticipated this was going to happen. This was on his schedule. He knew this. So while we who didn't know it was going to come about will be up in arms, he's still relaxed because he's watching his plan run its course. Hence, set time for deliverance came to me in that a lot of times you watch programs, people, you would see people in these deliverance program, you know, like everyone that comes to them and they touch them, they're delivered. They're fluttering on the ground. They're doing a bunch of somersaults and all kind of stuff. And then we don't hear from them no more. We just bring them on and pay them a couple of dollars and do this fake testimony, whatever the case may be. Set time of deliverance is just that. Being on God's schedule for your set time for freedom, your set time to be released from your bondage, whether it's you, you're not married, whether you're barren, whether you could never be promoted, whether it's fair, whatever it is. God in his, in his ability to be in control of everything has set a set time on everything to happen, whether it's good, evil, indifferent. And I'm going to prove that to you tonight in scripture. The reason why I want to do that is because I want you to be more concerned about your set time as opposed to being caught up. Oh, I got to go over here to Bishop Timbuk too because you see how these have demons come out of the people and everybody on the ground and all this foolishness. No, you are going to be more acutely aware that I need to get more into the word, fuel myself with the word, practicing the word until my set time come. Until the time, and, and guess what? Your set time, like it was for me, wasn't where somebody else delivered me. My set time, I told you, I fasted, I prayed, I fasted, I prayed, I got into the word. And I was delivered from some things and didn't even realize it till I look back in hindsight. Hey, look, I don't have those desires no more. I don't do this no more. How come I don't feel this, this temptation to do this particular thing anymore? Because guess what? I, in, my, my, I, I encountered my set time, didn't even realize it. All because I was getting into the word and feeding my spirit on the word of God. So that is basically what we're going to get into, but we're going to get into an even deeper aspect of it. Okay. Now the word deliverance, <clears throat> excuse me. When we speak about deliverance, deliverance, the action of being rescued or set free, <clears throat> excuse me, from something or someone. There's some of you listening to me right now who are bound by fear. You are so fearful that it, you're almost afraid of your own shadow. You always think the worst when you hear, if someone call you, I mean, it could be a big sunny day and your phone ringing, and especially if it's a, it's a, it's a private call, meaning that you couldn't tell who's calling, you don't know the number or the name came up. The enemy has used you in a way to make you, I mean, just begin to think the worst. What if my kid got shot? What if someone was in an accident? What if I, they're calling me to fire me from my job? Your whole life is being uh, eaten away simply because you, you, you are disabled as it relates to enjoying your life. Why? Because the spirit of fear, which has you in bondage, is controlling your life. So what does a person need? Well, they need deliverance. They need to be rescued or set free from the spirit because there are many people that person's age. There are many people whose lifestyle is basically like this, except they do not have or they are not incapacitated by the spirit of fear. So this person over here is living their life freely. They don't, they're not having those experiences, but this one who was under bondage is, is, is being controlled by the spirit of fear. So this person needs deliverance. Okay, good. Now, this person, they, they will agree. That's true. I really need deliverance, child. I mean, I, I sometimes I'm afraid of my own shadow. Now, they're not thinking that 
everything that's going on in their life, and especially they needing needing to get more into the Word of God, is the protocol to their deliverance. Because they've been accustomed that the way that we see it on TV, some guy wearing 500 pieces of suit must come here and, you know, they need to crank up the music and then they need to pick me up and body slam me over the chairs. And then we get the entire church uh, ushers rush us with some covering our legs and so on and, and a whole cadre of events and we're delivered. But I'm going to show you some scriptures tonight as it relates to deliverance, as it relates to rescue, rescuing you or setting you free from these invisible bondages that for the most part you're not aware of that has incapacitated your life. And it does not require the theatrics that you see on television and all of this glamour and, and Hollywood stage foolishness. I put one at you right now, and you know I repeat it all the time. It's my the, the favorite scriptures in all of my teaching, Proverbs 11, verse 9b. And listen to what it says. It says that through knowledge, and that's going to be the prerequisite to deliverance, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. You're going to see this even beginning tomorrow night as we begin to look into Jesus' ministry and wherever he was delivering and setting people free and healing them, you will see where he preached or he taught first. Why? Because he's following this prerequisite that I have to give them knowledge. They need the understanding of God, not theatrics, not lights, not people running around with cloths to put over you if you fall to the ground after this guy do his jacket over you and all this foolishness. No, what we need is an understanding of how the spiritual world works. Hence, I gave you the two crash courses in spiritual basic warfare yesterday and the day before, because you need an understanding. And once you have an understanding, you realize, I don't really need to go up to Timbuktu church for him to put his hand on me. I don't need to do that. Hence, if we go back to the story with the centurion in the Bible, when he told Jesus, hey, look here, one of my men, these guys are sick, man. You know, they really, I, I know you're into the healing business and I believe you are. And I see you're a man of authority just like me. So Jesus said, I'll come there, okay? And he said, no, 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 no. Now, this is a man that the Bible does not label or categorize as a follower or even a believer of Jesus. But he believed that if this is what you do, then I believe that your authority will take care of the matter. He said, I believe if you just send your word, it will be done. So this is how we need to be thinking, meaning that we're not saying that you shouldn't look at me. Let's use me. You shouldn't say, but boy, I would love to come to the bar because I know if Brother Kevin paid for, prayed for me, man, I know I'm going to be free. I, this guy got some serious prayers. You, you already at a loss because what you're doing is you're trying, to, you're trying to label the power of God and reduce it to a human level. The scriptures are clear. The day you got saved, just like me, he says, behold, I have given you power. You don't have, you accepted Jesus. You don't have to go and do some jumping jacks and, and run a quarter mile every morning to get this power. The problem is, is that what you've been exposed to over the years is that you have to now jump all of these different hurdles in order to be like, uh, to, to be healed or to heal someone or, or to pray for someone. No, I can't pray. Kevin, I would want to pray, but man, I can't pray like you. What do you mean you can't pray like me? Yeah, I, I hear you. I you praying like me. You, so you're telling me that God only listens to the way that I pray because of how I pray? The scriptures are clear. The scriptures are clear. He said, because of what Jesus done, you, me, the novice at prayer, the seasoned at prayer, those who are seasoned at prayer, can come boldly before the throne. Listen to require, the requirements. He say, a broken heart and a contrite spirit I will never despise. He didn't say that an eloquent prayer or someone who got it all together. He said, no. So what I'm saying to you, my job is very difficult, you know, because I have to deprogram you. I have to help shed the nonsense that you received over the years that has done one thing, kept you in bondage, kept you limited kept you second guessing yourself and has ripped every shred of confidence from you because you believe that I either got to pay for this or I got to be a great prayer or man, I want to quote those scriptures like my brother Kevin over there. None of this, the Bible is requiring of you. 
the scriptures come as you are. Get into the word of God and the Holy Spirit that is in you. And if you're feeding yourself of the word of God, these things are going to automatically come forth. So this is the, the, the travesty that I have. This is the difficulty that I have because when people come to me, they're coming believing that I know I have another hurdle to jump because that's I know I know the routine and they think that's normal. That is not of God. This is not the way Jesus Christ intended it to be. And that's why I'm telling you, if these people don't get it right, hellfire is going to be their final destination. It is so evil. When you when you charge for the free gospel, when you tell people they got to come through you to go to Christ, that you're not rescuing them. Hence, Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 8, do not be entangled into the bondage. Do not be entangled again, sorry, in the bondage that you came from. You came from a world of sin. You now gave your life to Christ, who has now severed the spiritual cause that gave the enemy the legal right over you because you were not a child of God. So if you if you accept Jesus Christ right now, all of the benefits that this Bible have, you immediately have them. You don't have to be Christian for four years before you have the gift of healing or whatever. In fact, you had those things before you became a Christian. The gifts are without repentance. You don't, In fact, you could go straight to hell with your gift if you're not safe. So again, I, I have to deprogram folks because where they came from, has incarcerated them so tightly mentally that when you tell them how simple the free gospel of Christ is, they find it suspicious. Kevin, you're telling me you and I could hold hands right now and come in agreement that the Lord will free me from this fear? No, boy, Kevin, uh-uh, no, no. Kevin, I got to give a seed. I got to do... I say, no, you know, I say, let's... Where in the Bible are we going to find this? Well, I say again, let me be clear. I'm not saying that if God leads you to give someone a seed or whatever, that's different. I'm talking about the norm that we see today. The norm, the foolishness I read on Facebook, the nonsense about how you have to give this and that for God to do, to do what? But anyway, we can shut all that down today. So deliverance, as I have up here, is the action of being rescued or set free. What is interesting is every Christian needs deliverance, every believer. It is automatic that the unbeliever needs it. First, he needs to get his soul right, and then now begin the process of being delivered from the various vices and generational curses and all of the uh, spiritual obstacles that are in their bloodline or even been uh, transferred from their spouse's bloodline to them, seeing that they're married and they're now one. So every believer needs deliverance. I, I was a Christian and I was locked down with spiritual vices that had me in a habitual state of performing sin that I didn't want to do, just like what Paul said in uh, Romans 7. But then he came back in Roman 8, he says, hey, now, hold on, now, hold on. I, something, listen. He says, let there be for, therefore no condemnation. Now, watch the prerequisite for those who are in Christ Jesus, those who are committed and not walking after the flesh, but after the spirit of the living God. If you're committed to do that, he's saying, no matter how much time you fall, get back up and keep on with your commitment. But don't let some joker come talk fool to you with this uh, puppet dress on, with this clown circus hat telling you nonsense. Let's go back to the scripture. Let's practice the word of God to get the benefits of God, not this foolishness you run on with. You're talking nonsense. So our base scripture tonight, we have two base scriptures. Okay, and remember our topic is there is a set time for deliverance. Psalms 102. We're going to look at Psalms 102, and we're going to look at verse 13. Psalms 102, verse 13. I'm going to take my time and read and explain these. I'm going to give you two base scriptures, Psalms 102, verse 13. Now listen to what it says. Psalms 102, verse 13 says, Thou shall arise, that's God now, God or thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. Zion in the Bible is referred to as the church or the people of God. 
Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. I love this so much, yeah? For the time to favor her, the time to have mercy on her. Listen to what he says. The time to favor her, yea, the set time, I like that, is come. Let me sit back here because I, I already on fire already. Let me calm now just a little bit because I get excited. The scripture is now, now let's, 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 let me just reel back just a little bit. God could favor Zion on a 24-7 basis. And we can get deep into this, what I'm about to lay on you right now. But there was a specific time, just like your deliverance, just like some of you out there who, who are barren, some of you are not yet married, some of you who, who've been, who haven't been promoted in years. Listen to me. What you should be asking God based on what this man's saying, I hope I haven't passed my set time. I hope, Father God, I wasn't caught up in some joker church, some cult, or some place where it was called in the house of God had me given seed every minute, not knowing that while I was in there wasting my time and giving of my resources, my set time was passing me by. Get out of here, that garbage talking fool. He said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time has come. God is sitting back in heaven. Because he knows the times for everything, he's a God of order. And we can get there. And in order to have order, you need to have rules and principles. You need to have ordinances. You need to have uh, 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 laws in place. But aside from that, there's something else you need. You need time and seasons. That's why every CEO, every president of a company, every head of a family, every in order for the leader, no matter how big the staff or the subjects are, he has to lead, he or she, the best way he has to do, he got, he, got to, he got to put things in order. He got to have a set time to do this and a set time to do that. That's the only way he will have true control. And putting the right people in place and they have to report to you in the sense that they are doing what they're supposed to do at the set time. I'm talking to somebody today. I'm talking to somebody. I'm trying to reel myself in right about now. So he says, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time. There, is a there was a time set on God's schedule. That's why he was never under no pressure. That's why when the fake prophets was running around and everybody was getting upset that when God could strike these fellas down, God said, don't worry about them. There's a set time for them. There's a set time. There's a time when I'm going to arise. Okay, to give favor to my church. To now really, I gave them enough time to get it right. I sent Kevin, I sent everybody to warn them. Just like in the days of Noah, there was a set time. The flood came 100 years after God told Noah that the flood was going to come. He was 500 at the time. The flood couldn't come at 550 years. The flood couldn't come at 525 years. There was a set time, 100 years from the date that I told you I'm about to show up with the promise. Now, whether they believe you or not, we're not interested in that. So all of those folks who had 100 years to get it right laughed at Noah. Look at this fool. This dummy billing out in the desert. It hasn't rained out here in years. And this nutcase out here billing a whole ark. Where, where, now, where the water can come from to float? The same water will then drown you in the next hundred years. So God gave you a time. God, God said, look here. Get it together. This is going to happen. But you see, because they're so fleshly and they just see their, their limited knowledge of just the physical things, they, they don't see beyond that. So the Bible says, For thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, the time is now arrived to favor her. But then he, he added more to it. He says, not just the time I'm saying here has come, but this was a set time. It couldn't happen before and it couldn't happen after. This is the set time that God has scheduled that I'm about to arise right now and I'm about to throw down right here. Somebody listening to me right now. When you're going to have a baby for your husband? This is now five years right now. Someone listen to me, Father, when you are going to heal me. What you should have been doing is getting in the word of God and everything that have to do with being fruitful and multiplying in terms of your offspring, everything that had to do with your healing, you should have been feeding yourself on the word of God so when the set time comes, you will be able to recognize it.
not some joker up on a stage with a clown suit throwing people all over the place and doing a bunch of kung fu. Where, 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 where's the police? Because these fools need to be locked up. They need to be caged. They have the, the house of God for a circus. And we'll sit back and defend them. Boy, I can't get past that. God knows it. I just can't get past that. You call that church. The fella quote no scriptures. The fella is telling you riddles all day. He's slapping you. He's embarrassing you. He's walking on your pregnant stomach. I, someone just sent me something that yesterday where a preacher in Africa somewhere is farting on people to heal them. But let me tell you, I can't wait. God knows that I can't wait for when the set time come for God to deal with these fools because that's what they are. So he says, the set time to favor, sorry, he says, for the time to favor her has arrived. But it's not just the time, it was a set time for it to happen. God said, I'm coming to deliver my church now. I'm coming to deliver. But this deliverance isn't haphazardly. This deliverance isn't just happening because I just got tired one day. He said, no, 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 no. Because I'm all-knowing, because I know the end from the beginning, because I'm the Alpha and Omega, and a part of me being in control is that I had to set times and seasons on everything. So when that comes up on the schedule, I will deal with it. I, it was never out of order from my perspective. I knew it was going to happen. Now I'm coming to set the order. Let's go to our next theme scripture. Let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 8. These are two theme scriptures, and then we're going to just plunge into this. i love loving this already. So this here is now going to prove my point to you. Even myself, I tell you, when I was going through the witchcraft attacks, the depression, and literally I was in tears. When I, sometimes when I was praying, I had to stop because I couldn't catch myself. I was so crying. God, if you could only take this pain of depression, if you could only relieve me of this heavy burden, if you only could, just for 10 minutes, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy. He never did it. And, 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 you know, when you go on with your regular life, sometimes the thought comes back to you, well, if God is so powerful, then why don't take this pain? Why don't fix this cancer? Why don't do this? You got it now that you're coming into the understanding about set times. You see, if God don't have set times, not only will he not be in control, then he will be our puppet. Think about it. Oh, God, uh, I broke today. Uh, put 200000 on my account for me. Then somebody in Pakistan, oh, God, uh, you know what? These fellas around here bothering me all the time. Send a legion of angels and just take off all layers to show them who run things up in here. He would be a puppet. He would be like, oh, I have to please my people. So every, he'll be all over the place. He don't know what to do. No, 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 no. He have a set time which most of these jokers don't respect because they run on the circus show up in God House. But that ain't God House. It was set time. And if you are delivered while under them, that was your set time. So your mind should be, Father God, thank you for this understanding, Lord. But Lord, I pray I didn't miss my set time. Because you can't miss it. And God is aware that you could miss it. And how you know this? Because he now comes back in his law and he makes this provision in uh, Joel 2 and 25, and listen to what he said, because he know you would roll up on these fake prophets. He know you would roll up on these fake apostles and pastors and these money-hungry dogs. He knew that. So you know what he said in his word? He said, now come here, read this right here, Joel 2 and 25. He says, I will restore unto you. To restore means to make new again. To restore means that you've had losses, so I'm going to repair it or repay it. I knew, I knew you would have rolled up on some cult church. I knew you would have rolled up on some circus clown who's pretending to be an agent of me. I knew that. I knew. And I allowed you to go through it. But I was hoping that you would be uh, cognizant and pick up on the nonsense I do. So when I pull you out, you will be fully prepared to recognize them and discern them from a mile away and to teach others how to discern them. He said, now, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to restore you the years where the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust, and the palmer worm has eaten away. No, no insects were eating at you, but these are all symbolic of spiritual forces eating away at your spiritual blessings, your spiritual set times. 
while they were play, giving you uh, hocus pocus pie in the sky promises. Every week taking your money. Every time you come there, they're taking your money. God says, so this. God says, so that. God says, so into this apostolic garbage. Oh, you just give it because you are trained that, hey, if that's the preacher, you must honor the preacher. Don't, don't, don't ever look at his fruit. Don't ever assess him by the fruit. Forget what God say. Just be a donkey and a fool and just give up your money and give them everything and give them your children college fund. Give them all your, your, your kidney transplant money. Give it to them because God is going to use them according to them to bless you. And the only one being blessed is them. What are they doing now? Eating at your set time. Because you're not focused on God anymore. Your confidence is in mere mortals. That time your spiritual opportunities are just passing you by. But God says, you know what? Like I have to arise for Zion because a set time has come, yours coming too. In fact, right now, some of you are going to receive it through this message. So going back here to Ecclesiastes now, in verse, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, listen to what he says. He says, to everything, everything. I was sharing the same teaching with somebody uh, sometime last week. I was discussing it briefly with them. And they said to me, they said, now Kevin, are you saying to me, because if I think I got you right, are you saying a set time, like, like God got a set time? So are you trying to tell me if I if I got a problem now and I say, Lord, deliver me right now, like God wouldn't do it? I don't know. Excuse me, because if it if you say God heal me right now, just may be your set time. So I don't know. What I do know is that there is a set time on not just deliverance, because what we are about to read, there is a set time on everything. That is how God is able to be in control. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. To everything. You know what everything means? To everything or all things, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. You're, the day you were supposed to get married, the day you're supposed to have children, the day everything, life is saturated Everything that God has promised you, everything is on a schedule. That's why he said in Ephesians 1 verse 3, he says, listen, I have already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I've already set you up. What you don't know is that they're all on a set time. They're all on a schedule. So don't let these people tell you God told me that he's going to turn you around. Get that nonsense out of here. Could you kindly show me the scriptures? Can you kindly walk me through the scriptures to have an understanding while you get over your asthma? Go get the, the your asthmatic pump and, and correct yourself. So in fact, go heal yourself. Talking nonsense around here, man. I just tired of them. I tired of their wickedness. I tired of their foolishness. I'm tired of their deception. Bunch of crooks, man. So the Bible says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Now, here's how it starts out. Listen, the first, after that first line is said, listen to verse two. It's a time to be born and a time to die. Now, let's stop right there. So, what the Bible is saying, once you are, first of all, you got to be born in the earth to be a participant of the set times that are already in place for you. Because everything that you're going to read, there's a time to love, there's a time to embrace, there's a time to do that, there's a time to do that. None of that could happen without your existence. So the protocol here is you must be born first. So he said there's a time to, what he said, there's a time to born, a time to be born, and there's a time to die. So what that statement is saying, between when you are born and when you die, now what goes on, it's a time to plant and a time to pluck up. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down. All that is going on between the day you were born and the day you die. So your life is on a schedule. Your deliverance, your having children, you being healed, you being delivered from certain vices, you being elevated in the body of Christ, you being increasing in your knowledge. Oh, everything is on a schedule. I'm talking to somebody. Everything is on a schedule. So when some joker come to you, because he is Mr. Boss, Prophet, Antiseptic, Motor Oil, Cooling for Your Engine, Prophet, as if he could alter God's set time. Okay, how long you were sick now? Two years? Okay. And, and another prophet prophesied that 
you would be healed within a year. Okay. And that has been two days. He told you that. Okay, well, I'm going to tap into my express apostolic healing uh, skills and I'm going to speed up that time. How could you do that? How could you speed up God's set time? Make me understand that. See, and again, when you don't know these things, in order to respect for them, you sit back and you listen. See, but listening to them after a while, you really can begin to believe the nonsense that they're saying to you. The Bible is clear here. There, to everything, there is a season. That's the reason why in the previous scripture that we read, which was uh, Psalms uh, 102 verse 13, he said, thou, thou arise, O Lord, for the time to favor uh, Zion, yea, the set time. It is only in, in, in correlation with the scripture here. There was a season and there was a time already set where God says, I'm going to rise now and I'm going to deal with this situation. I'm going to bring the favor. They've been praying for years for it, you know, and it wasn't that I didn't hear them, but they're going to not get me to speed up my set time. Now, why is all of this making sense? Because this is the revelation God gave me, because I'm telling you, during my times of going through and deliverance, and even after I was delivered, I was always challenged like, God, why you never heal me or delivered me during those rough times, those times that I really thought I would, would not have made it through the next day or made it through this night for the next day. Why didn't you deliver me? And, and to be honest with you, this was the main reason why this, this teaching came to me. Here is what the Lord shared with me. The sad times that we have in life, it's not to punish us, it's not to frustrate us, but forget the sad time for right now. What is going on prior to that next appointed time? Well, for the most part, you're going through. For the most part, you're catching hell. For the most part, all kind of hell. But the truth is you're being conditioned. The truth is you're being trained. The truth is you're in boot camp, just like me. I was going through all of these witchcraft for these different ladies I was with, all of, on the edge of losing my mind, all of this. And I thought it was most egregious. And sometimes I was mad at God. I told you this before that I had even stopped praying. But in hindsight, now that I have already arrived at my set time, had I not gone through that, had he not allowed that season and period of frustration and troubles and all of that, I would not have the knowledge and the wisdom I have today. I would not have the acquired uh, understanding of these things had I not gone through that. So here's what I'm saying. Let's say right now, Okay, you're going through, you want to be the manager on your job. You've never been through the difficulties on that job. You don't know what it's like to deal with human relations and looking at two sides. You don't know none of that. So let's say you say, God, I want a promotion right now. And boom, he made you the CEO. You know what you will do? You will mess right up. And let me tell you why you'll mess up. Because see, the, the, the time before you get to your set time was to deal with you, to deal with your bad ways, deal with your spitefulness, deal with your frustration and your inability to be patient with people, dealing with your anger. So he gave you everything which you asked for. You would be a spoiled child. You're talking to somebody. You're talking to somebody today. You would be a spoiled little brat. So now that I understand it in hindsight, that's why I say to you all the time, I'm like, Father, I thank you for my enemies. Boy, y'all don't know what y'all did for me. I could not see the, the conditioning of what y'all opposition was doing to me. I could not see it. I couldn't see it till in hindsight. If it was not for them, I would have never done a 40-day fast. I would have never done a 21-day. I would have never done a 7-day. Listen to me. I would have never gone out on the beach and sit in that car and pray for hours. I would never ride the streets of my island just praying, 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 praying at 12 midnight, praying at 3 a.m. in the morning. I would have never done any of that. And I had no idea all of this was leading up to my set time. But even when the set time come, I would have been fully conditioned because of my haters, because of my enemies. So this joker who's coming in now talking fool, but he's super prophet and all this garbage. You, you are a joke because you don't understand God's system. You don't know. You are misguided. You are delusional. God is at work. Who, whoever, you, listen, whoever's listening to me right now, I don't care how bad your situation, God is at work in your life. 
and the bad situation and the enemies are grooming you. They are the chisels and the hammer that God is using you to, to, to groom you to his finished work when you come to your set time. I'm talking to somebody right now. I talk and don't be looking at that people. Oh Lord, how come it happened for him? That's their set time. What are you getting jealous for? This person over here got promoted. That was their set time. This was in place before the foundation of the world. You had them, neither you had any control over that. Appreciate where you are now because something better coming. Because in the same scripture in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1, not only is it making it clear to us that there is a time and a season. The mere fact that there's a time and a season for everything, the overall understanding is that absolutely nothing can go on forever. Nothing. And now you're going to begin to appreciate the set times that God has ordained in your life. That's why when you hear me praying, sometimes I say, Lord, Father God, I pray now that every opportunity that I've missed in life, or even if I'm praying for someone, Father, I pray for so and so right now, Lord, you said in your word that you'll restore unto them the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust, and the palmer worm has eaten away. This is your promise. So, Father God, everything that has passed them by, every opportunity. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're back. We're back. I don't know what just happened, but anyway, forget all of that. Forget all of that. So, like I was saying earlier, we, all of us, there are set times in our life to be delivered, to be healed. There are set times when you will be sick. There's a period for sickness. Or there's a period for being healed. There's a period for frustration. There's a period in your life where things are calm. I'll use me again for example. At this point in my life, 
life is beautiful. Life is calm. Life is sweet. Life is everything that I wanted at this point right now. Now, this doesn't guarantee it's going to be like this up the road later. But what I'm saying to you, and this is why the Bible says to us, we must give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God concerning us in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18. We must focus on those set times. Focus on the sense that, not saying, oh Lord, I want of my set time today. No. Whatever you are going through, you shouldn't be complaining. You shouldn't be talking nonsense. Father, I guess this is my time for this right now, but I'm looking forward to something even better in the future. You've said in your word that you will restore me. So I may think I suffer losses now because uh, you had a divorce and you had to sell the home and you had to start back from scratch again. You lost your job, high paying job. Now you're making minimum wage. That ain't going to be forever. And, and the only reason why that will may go on forever is if you keep speaking it to be forever. Things never happening for me. Every time I put one step forward, I got to take two back. Stop talking that junk and speak life because according to God's timing, there's a season, there's a period, there's a time set and etched out for this particular situation. Scripture. So let me pull up my scripture back here again. So back here to Ecclesiastes 3. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. First of all, you got to be born. So he's saying there's a time to, 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 to be born and there's a time to die. But in between those times, he says, and there's a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to steal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh. Before I even go any further here, <clears throat> you know, I started off by saying to you, there are some people who are overwhelmed by fear and anxiety and so on. You know what they're really doing when they don't have no control over that? They're stealing into their future set time for favor, set time for joy, set time for happiness. What I mean by that, where they're so overwhelmed with fear and worry and but stuff that may not even happen, that even when those set times of joy and happiness and traveling with family and enjoying life come, they can't because they too, they're busy. Oh God, Lord, one, I hope Junior don't get killed. I hope Mary don't get shot in the head. Oh Jesus, these young people so violent around you. Oh Lord, they all over the road speeding around and these loud music. Jesus, Lord, what next? You know what they're doing? They're reaching over into their future time of joy. And, and, and robbing themselves through the fear and anxiety that they have right now. God ain't call you to that kind of life, man. And I, and I refuse to live that way. I will never in this life live that way. No, I, and not only that, the more you practice that nonsense, you are going to become perfect at it. So what happened now? When you get up in age, 60, 65, 70, 75, you're scared of your own shadow. Why? Because all throughout your 30s and 20s and 40s, you were training visual, vigorously like a soldier how to be fearful when you get older. No, boy, I ain't putting up with that. I ain't putting up with that foolishness, boy. I ain't training to be a prisoner to myself. That's nonsense. And then when my set times of joy and opportunity and wealth and stuff come, I can't enjoy it because I'm scared. I ain't sleeping with the lights off. Oh, Lord, let me put 50 locks on this door because these crazy people smoking grass all day, coming in your house and shooting you up. <laughs> no, no, I'm not living like that. And you shouldn't be living like that either. God isn't, God isn't, God. do not let the enemy steal from you your set times. No, the scriptures are unequivocally clear. Proverbs 6, 30 to 31, I love it. He says, the thief be found. If you discover the thief in your life, God says, I'm not going to do this for you. I'm giving you, I'm, I'm authorizing you to do this. You must command and demand the thief, the enemy, to return unto you at minimum sevenfold of what he originally stole from you. Then God backed it up in our Joel 2 and 25. He says, now I will restore unto you the years that they took from you. Because God knows that there are some people who are going to, to reach over into their sad times and rob themselves with fear and worry, anxiety and depression. No, there are many people who I know who are being challenged up with, with depression and so on. Now, this is something I never did. I will, I will tell you this. When I was going through my period of depression, like I told you, nobody knew. I never discussed it with anybody. So when I finally came out and discussed it with the world, my best friends and many of my close friends were shocked. They were like, but we never knew this. 
But then they remember, but I remember when you used to be so isolated, you cut everybody off and you never came up, you never met with us, but that was the time I was going through it. I, in hindsight now, I realized that I got through it, yes, by the word of God and through the fasting and so on. But what I also realized, I never extended that time of depression because I never sat down and constantly complained about it. Oh Lord, this depression, this. I never jumped on the phone and said, you know, I have a depression, right? You know that, right? Oh yeah, man, I just want to talk to you, man. See, I never did none of that. But I didn't know what I was doing was good at that time. I just was isolating myself. But again, in hindsight, it benefited me because I didn't have anyone to rehearse this nonsense in their ears and, 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 and robbing me of the future joy and these moments right here that God had set for me. So I'm talking to somebody tonight, man. You, you rehearsing the same garbage over and over and over and over again. You rehearsing the same nonsense that happened 980 million years ago. And for some reason, I don't know if it appeases you or I, if it gives you some kind of authority, but look at your life. What is changing by you saying that? What is changing by you repeating? That's why the kids are rebellious against you. That's why your husband don't even sleep in the same room with you. He's tired of trying to reach out, hug you, kiss you, show some affection, only for you to run with some garbage rehearsing that same foolishness. What are you doing? You are in a set time where you and your husband are getting along good. You are in a set time where the man is actually home. But all you could run on with is something that didn't happen in the past. You all need to get safe, boy. You don't need to get saved. You need to get saved. You're letting the enemy rob you. So let's look at another scripture because you know I want you to take your time and read from Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to verse 8 because it talks about all of the, the set time for everything. I want us now to go to Daniel chapter 2 because you're going to see more evidence of this. Daniel chapter 2, and I want us to look at verse 21. Daniel chapter 2 verse 21. All right, and it says, And he which is God... Changing the times and the season. He's the one responsible for moving you or changing the time from this time of depression, Kevin. I'm going to take you into a time of joy. I'm going to take you into a time where you're going to appreciate right down to the, the grain of sand on the ground because you remember the days that you couldn't see the, the city for the smoke. You remember when you were so frustrated, you couldn't think straight. You couldn't even form a sentence to write nothing because you were down. So God says here, it is he. It is he that changes the time and the season. It is him who removed kings and set up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding. Him is him. This is his schedule. So what I'm saying to you, no preacher, no Kevin, the teacher, no apostle, no prophet, they don't change no time. They don't, all they're doing, if they are real, they are coming in alliance with what God already said before the foundation of the world. When they sin, we can get into two scriptures on that tonight. When someone prophesied you, that's not coming from them if they are real. What they are being doing to the Holy Spirit, who is responsible for all truth, the Spirit is revealing to them something that's on the schedule that God had done before the foundation of the world. That's coming up. So you don't look at them like some superhero. They are a vessel, just like me right now in my teaching, being used for the honor and glory in the uplifting of God. That's all it is. So they know superpower. Stop worshiping people. I don't know what is the obsession with it. Well, I shouldn't say that because that seemed to be the module for the day. But in any event, in any event, when someone prophesied, the prophecy is the result of the Holy Spirit advising them. Kevin, in the next two days, is going to be blessed. Not because he is saying it, but because the spirit who understand the scheduling of God is saying his schedule, his time of favor is right there. Tell him, tell him right now. But don't you come doing all of this like, 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 like you, you in the mind of God in this garbage. You're, Get out of here. You all need to kick them from around you. All these people are devils. And then I'll give you a, a, an invoice. You're going to get an invoice after he told you quote unquote what the spirit of God showed him yeah God showed me that but uh, you know you ain't getting away like that I need to because you know the frog gotta be here you know I need I'm gonna need that little thing I'm gonna need that I'm gonna need that seed all right because that's an apostolic uh motor roller coolant prophecy I'm gonna need that seed 
Get that seed ready. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. And if you don't have the full seed, uh, just let the usher take you into the finance department, the apostolic prophetic finance department, where we can work on a payment plan with interest. And we're gonna put a little, uh, we're gonna put a little, uh, a little uh, prophetic discount on there for you of zero point zero 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 two percent. Go, my child, and sin no more. See that? That's what you like. You like foolishness, just like that. You like garbage with these crooks. Boy, let me tell you something. God is going to whip them all across their head. But in any event, when whatever prophecy come, whatever deliverance come, whatever healing come, you just read it. I just showed it to you. God said to you in his law, in his rule, in his principle, Kevin and Mary and Tom and Sue and Peter and Tommy, all of y'all, listen, there, is a, there are times and seasons that I have already set I've already said what, what it means is that your situation is not forever. However, I also said that a man shall eat or, or, or eat, will live good by the fruit of his lips. So if you're in a season of depression, if you're in a season of poverty, if you're in a season of trials and temptation, do not keep reiterating it. Do not keep repeating it because according to my law, death, you're either going to give life to it or you're going to give death to it based on the words that you say. When we when we when we break it down, it means that you're either going to extend the season that was only supposed to be for two months. You now you you now in the fourth year of this because you can't keep your silly mouth shut, shooting off garbage all day. Instead, you speak the word of God. Instead, you decree what you want. To, I know I'm going to have my house debt free. I know I'm going to have a good marriage. I know my children are going to go to college. I know they're going to preach the gospel. I know every last one of them are going to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the spirit of God before they leave from time into eternity. Why are you not saying that? Why are you not saying that? But you talking mess all day and talking fool. Well, Bishop then say, my season round the corner. Yeah, you getting a season, all right? Season salt. That's what you getting. Talking nonsense. Tired of people preaching nonsense to you. Foolishness. Let's stick with the scripture. I don't know why that's so difficult. Let's stick with the word of God. So in Daniel here, he says, listen. God, there's a season. It's God who's making these changes. It's God who's the one who's changing it from this bitter season to the beautiful season. It's God who's changing it from a season that you came from that was so good. And now you got to go through some trials and some tribulations and some people talking about you. Why? Because this is to condition you for the next season of your life. God know what he's doing. This is what control is. God being in control is that he is the one who is changing the seasons. He is the one who's transitioning you into the next. The devil ain't doing this. The devil can be the one who can challenge you. But when you understand that this can't go on forever, yeah, devil, bring your best shot on because whatever it is, God is using you to chisel me to what I need to prepare for in the next season of my life. Try that, boy. Don't you come with that foolishness. So watch this now. We understand here that in order for God to be in control of everything, not just your personal life, but all lives, the universe, look, look, how much, look how much the CEO of creation is responsible for. He's responsible for the galaxies, the planets. He's responsible for the right amount of mixture in the air, oxygen, nitrogen, all this other stuff. He's responsible for how that plane is going to fly based on the gravitational laws. He's responsible for your health. All of these things he's responsible for. He's responsible for heaven. He's responsible for everything. How does God keep everything in order and in control? Through set times. That's how we do it. Through set times. To appointed times. There's a set time. I remember when I worked on my job and there were times when we had deadlines to meet. And sometimes I used to be frustrated. I'm like, man, these people always got these deadlines. But now when I put myself in that position, that's how they run the company. This is why they're successful. Because there's a certain uh, deadline they need you to meet. Because this deadline you're supposed to meet, this is now supposed to go with somebody else's stuff to bring about this result that we all counsel ourselves on as the CEOs and the administration to bring about a certain result. So what I'm saying to you, wherever you are going through right now, whether it's pleasant or unpleasant, it is all preparing you for the next season, the next set time of your life. Don't discount it. Don't, don't curse it. Don't row it. Where there's a bad relationship, where there's horrible people on the job, where there's good people on the job, don't become uh, so caught up in it. Oh, I love working with y'all. Y'all are the most beautiful people in here. Trust me, that's the season. 
Don't worship that. Don't fall in love with that because those same people during this particular set time, well, there may be a part in there where they're going to turn on you. But what you should do after coming into this revelation, okay, you're all acting stupid now. Well, I guess this is a part of the set time. But Father God, give me the patience to go through this. Help me to learn what you want me to learn from this because I know something coming up and I can need this training here to, to be effective where I go in. That's how we need to look at it. Set time. There's a set time for your deliverance. There's a set time when you will be released or rescued. There's a time already appointed for that. And nobody tell you no fool. There's a time set for that. Okay? So, so, so order, let's go back to order now. The Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. What's that, what does that mean? See, confusion means that there are no set times. There were no set times. There were no appointments. So everything is in confusion. So the Bible says God is not the author of that. He is a God of order. And if he's a God of order, that means he needs to put rules and principles and laws and ordinance in place to, 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 garner, to garner a specific ordained end result. When he put the rules and the laws in place for gravity, it simply means that whatever is flying about in that sky is going to be there temporarily. It ain't going to fly forever, whether it's a bird or whether it's an aircraft. So God knows what he's doing. He's not lost. He's not what these jokers are painting him to be. Like some jackpot, you just put a couple dollars in and he spit out all kind of Mercedes Benz and nonsense. That is, that is the God of this world, which is the devil. That's not the God of Abraham that we serve. He operates on set times. So the basis of his operation is the rules and regulations and the ordinances and laws along with the set times and seasons. That's how we do it. So your deliverance is for a set time. Don't let the spirit of anger and impatience and frustration get the better part of you, which you should say now, now that I'm showing you this revelation. Father, what is it I'm supposed to learn here? Because guess what? If I don't get the lesson during this boot camp, when I get to the next side of this, I will not be prepared to deal with what's coming. No. So when God pulled me out of the depression, Pull me away from these people doing nonsense all day. Look where I am today. I'm prepared to minister the gospel with passion, with boldness, with no fear of nobody. I could come and say what I want to say about the word of God with no restrictions. Why? Because my times of the past prepared me for this. Come with no nonsense. I didn't have to go with nobody, break no can of oil over my head and four fellas kung fu slap me on the ground and, and with some apostolic garbage. I'm not following that voodoo garbage. I am following what God has called me to do. I ain't following no man-made rules. All of that restricting you. All of that is keeping you from your set time. You will never be what you are called to be when you are confined and committed to the, the, the demonic rules of men. When are you going to get that? Think about it. You're not even living for Christ anymore. You're just putting in your time because one day you hope pastor die so that you could be the assistant pastor, which will never happen because his child is going to be it. You can forget that right now. And his child never like you know how, so they can kick you out of the church. So you don't put in 35 years only to get a whole boot up in you because you was more about a system as opposed to the things of God. And you deserve it too. You deserve it. So watch this. God is in control as a result of his set times, his set seasons. And in those times and seasons, they're all revolving around his laws, his rules, his principles. So he is in control. God isn't scratching his head like us. Oh my God, this is happening in China. This is happening in the Bahamas. Oh my Lord, what am I going to do? No, he wouldn't be God if that was the case. You know what's making him God? What is making him God? The mere fact that he has everything on a schedule. Everything is on a conveyor belt, being governed by his laws, his rules, his principles. That's what you ought to be to be getting into. Now, I now I'm going to take take you into a scripture, two scriptures to be exact, and I'm going to show you everything that I've said to you so far. It's a set time for deliverance. I'm going to show it to you in scripture. Every point I hit, on, hit I hit already. I'm going to show you all of this in scripture right now. Okay, so watch this. Let's go here now to 2 Kings. This, I so love this here. Let's go to 2 Kings. Let's go to 2 Kings. You, you, you're going to enjoy this. Trust me. 2 Kings chapter 4. 
2 Kings chapter 4, and we're going to read from verse 13 to verse 17. 2 Kings chapter 4, and we're going to read from verse 13 to verse 17. Now, let me just give you some background. The prophet Elijah, all right, and his assistant, uh, uh, Gehazi or Gehazi, however you choose to pronounce it. There was a certain widow, sorry, there was a certain lady and her husband, but more so her, who used to see Elijah, you know, as a, who saw him as a true man of God. So every time he come into the city doing the work of God, it, it, it struck her hard one day and she shared with her husband, you know, why don't we, you know, refurbish this room right here and put a bed and, you know, some, you know, stuff in here. And let the man of God stay here because I could see he's a true, true man of God. So every time he would come in the city, she, she, they would tell him, you could stay here, man, free, nothing you got. We can take care of everything, food, whatever you want. So one day, Elijah, he was so overwhelmed by it. He told his assistant, yes, he said, go, 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 go ask the lady, what is it that she wants? Well, tell her whatever her request is. Just, just, just tell me what it is, right? So we're going to pick up the story. We're going to pick up the story from there. So I'm going to go to verse 13. Of 2nd Kings chapter 4. Let's go to verse 13. Verse 13. Sorry, let's start from verse 11. 2nd Kings, sorry, chapter 4, verse 11. And it fell on a day that he came there and he turned into the chamber and laid there. Now, this is Elijah. He's now into the chamber or this little efficiency that the woman had put there for him. Verse 12 says of 2 Kings 4, and he said to Gehazi, who is he? Elijah. Elijah is the prophet. Gehazi is his right hand. And Elijah said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto her, say now unto her, sorry, and he said unto him, Say now unto her. So this is Elijah saying to Gehazi, he's giving him instructions what to say to the woman. So let's take it from verse 13. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Or what do you want? Thou be spoken. Sorry. What, what is thou be spoken? For to the king or to the captain of the host. I wish I had my other Bible. I don't like reading from this King James or all this stuff. Anyway, and she answered, I dwell among mine own people. Verse 14. And he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, verily, she had no child and her husband is old. So you hear this now. So she's barren. She's saying she don't need none. She got her people around here. She's doing well. And her people can help her. So Elijah, Elijah now says to Gehazi, okay, well, she don't want nothing, but what do you think she want? You, you observe anything? So he says, well, her husband is old and she don't have no children. So verse 15 now says, and he said, call her. This is Elijah now. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. I love this piece right here, verse 16. And he said, I love this here. I love this because now he's, it's being downloaded to him that what is on God's schedule for this woman's life. Okay? Now watch verse 16 of 2 Kings 4. And he said, this is Elijah, and he said, about this season, according to the time of life. So he ain't just picking no rabbit out of no hat here. He's, he's now talking about the conveyor belt of God appointments and seasons. That's where he's speaking from. So he says in verse 16, and he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaiden. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elijah said unto her, according, listen carefully, to the time of life. So what is the season and time of life he's speaking about? Well, let's go back to Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 3, chapter 1. There is a time and a season for everything under the sun. Talk no mess to me. Talk no foolishness around here. You see it right there in living color. Living color, you see it. 
He didn't pull nothing out of her. She wasn't going to have a baby because he said so. He was tapping into God's scheduled time. She didn't even know about it. He said, check it out. According to the time of life and season, get ready, get ready, get ready, ready, because your baby coming. Now, I don't care what you think. You may not believe me. You may think I'm lying to you. But guess what? The proof is going to be in the pudding come the season when I see you again. And the Bible says she conceived. But I want you to look at the wording here. That's what I want you to see. Verse 16 says, and he said, which is Elijah, he says, about this season, according to the time of life, meaning that when the season come back next year or whatever, he said, according to the time of life. What does he mean by according to the time of life? Remember when we read in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1, he says, there's a time and a season for everything and purpose under the sun. And when we drop to verse 2, what is the first thing they say? There's a time to be born and there's a time to, to die. So what he's saying here when he says in verse 16, he says, and he said, according to the season, according to the time of life, according to your existence, because God is showing it to me in the spirit, according to your existence, according to your life, well, guess what? Next year, the same time, the same season, according to what I'm seeing in the spirit here, according to what the spirit is showing me, you are going to be having a boy. I hope you all getting this here. Yeah? I hope you all getting this. He didn't do this. I see where you have a forehead. I see where there's here. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing in the spirit you have a nose and I see lips. I'm looking at you and I see where you have a profile. You didn't go into all of that garbage. He didn't go into all that ignorance. He didn't go into all that foolishness. He didn't go into all that theatrics because that's what you see today. You see a bunch of clowns on stages with a bunch of lights and a bunch of jokers playing along with them, talking foolishness. This man, God gave him the ability. And guess what? You know, I can blow your brain out right now. Check this out. God has done that to many of you because he's done it to me. Remember I told you before when I was going through my go-through, when I couldn't see the city for the smoke, I would have dreams where I'm seeing myself preaching before thousands of people, hundreds of people. I saw myself traveling. I saw people embracing me. But the dream didn't make no sense to me because what I was going through at that time, boy, I didn't even have time preaching. I got time. I tried to get over these demons. But God was showing me what he had on his schedule. God was showing me the seasons and the time. This was my encouragement. I didn't notice it back then. I didn't even know what that was. was. But God was saying, listen, these dreams I'm showing you, I'm only giving you incentive to keep on going, Kevin. Keep on going. This soon finish. This is soon. This is soon going to be over. And when this is over and you take it for what it is, you are well prepared to go and minister my word. You are going to change lives. You are going to cause people to reevaluate what they subscribe to for years. Try that foolishness, boy. So what I'm saying to you, listen to me carefully. Do not despise where you are right now. Do not be upset. Do not complain. Thank God, Father, this is difficult to do. But I thank you because I believe, just like this lady, just like Mr. Ewing, just like many other people, I believe this is my season for this. But I don't want to complain because I will hurry up, get out of this, learn from this, only to be the best thing for the next season. Don't you try that. So the Bible says in verse 16 of 2 Kings 4, and he said about this season, meaning next year, the same time, as I think how the NIV would word it, next year, the same time. But listen though, listen what he says next. According to the time of life, according to God's schedule for your life, based on what I am seeing spiritually, you didn't ask for this from me, but I'm telling you what God say. Next year, this time, you're going to have a baby according to the assigned time of God. Now, if you ain't excited about that, then you ain't excited about other people's happiness. Man, listen, that blew my socks right off when I read that. That blew my socks right off. But let's look at some more. Let's look at some more uh, uh, of this, all right? Let's go to, let's go to, let's go to Genesis chapter 18. You can see more of this. 
I'm, and then I'm only giving you more empirical evidence. See, I laid the foundation, you know, I gave you Psalms 102 verse 13. I gave you Ecclesiastes. See, I'm building the foundation that what I'm about to say next, this ain't just hocus pocus. Your life, my life, everything in life is on a schedule. There are times in their season. It ain't going to be hot every day. It ain't going to be cold every day. Some days it can be joyful. Some days you can be sad. But this is life. Life is about cycles and seasons and times. People who don't like change, people who love to complain, they will never enjoy the good times when they come because they already robbed themselves in advance. They don't want nothing to do this so they complain, 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 complain. Just don't come around because I want to hear a story. I'll check you right away. I don't want to hear it. I, I understand now. So watch this. Genesis chapter 18. This, this is powerful. Genesis chapter 18. And I'm going to read from verse 1. Verse 1 to verse 14. I'm going to read it from my iPad right here. Genesis chapter 18. This is powerful. I love this so much here. I love this. Genesis 18, beginning on verse 1. Now listen to this now. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. The Lord appeared unto who? The Lord appeared unto Abraham. Now, even though they're using the Lord here, you're going to see an interchanging. At one point, they can say the Lord, and they can say the angels. All right? Now, that's a whole new different teaching. So we ain't going to go there right now. All right? And the Lord appeared unto him. Who is him? Abraham in the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked. And lo, three men, watch this now, stood by him. And when he saw them, three men stood by who? Abraham. Okay? Stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground. And said, my Lord. Now, isn't this interesting? There are three men, but he's saying, my Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant, okay? Verse four of Genesis 18. He say, let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts after that ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servants. And they said, so do as thou hast said. Verse six. And Abraham hastened, into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it and make cakes upon the heath. Verse 7 of Genesis 18. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man and he hastened to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree. And they did eat. Now watch this now. This is the part I won't get to. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah? Oh, I love this. Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, she is in the tent. Verse 10 of Genesis 18. I love this. Oh, I love this. And he said, mm -hmm, I will carefully, these, these are the men now. He said, I will carefully return unto thee according, listen to this, according to the time of life. Lord, 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 let me calm myself down. Let me, let me get myself together. <laughs> let me get myself together here because I, I get too excited. I get too excited. Let me, let me, before I say this, you're going to see a repeat of what we just read. But remember, Elijah said, according to the set time of life, but these guys weren't no prophet. These were actually spiritual beings. Okay? And they're about to say the exact same thing. Everyone who's truly a part of God can understand the scheduling system. They understand fully when you're hearing from God, and it's ain't got nothing to do with you. God is in his spirit is using you at this time to tell you what's up, what your next season is going to be like. And you don't have to pay for that, these bunch of crooks. But see it so and get out of here. So verse 10 of Genesis 18. And he said, I will certainly return unto you. Sorry, unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, 
shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. And now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the man of woman, meaning that her period had stopped. She couldn't even have children anymore. But the fella just tell you, though, but now you may not be seeing your period. You may not having those uh, ovaries and stuff come down to be fertilized by Abraham. I don't care what they say over there in this, the doctor office. I ain't care about all that. I'm telling you, based on what God has done for you, Sarah, and you, Abraham, before the foundation of the world, well, based on this schedule, you're all about to bring a boy up in this world. What you going to do now? I'm speaking to somebody tonight who has been frustrated. God did not put you on this live because he had nothing else to do. He put you here to encourage you. He put you here to say, stop looking at what's around you. Focus on my set time. Focus on what I've, I've told you already, according to Ephesians 1 and 3, that I have already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That's where they're allocated for you. I have placed it there for you. Don't let these destiny robbers come and tell you otherwise. Yeah, you've been to the doctor and they say you've been barren and this is your, your ninth year trying to have a baby. But you should be saying, Lord, when is my set time? Talking nonsense. Get out of here, that foolishness. When is my set time of life? What is schedule in the conveyor belt of life for my life in the next season? I love this. God, I love this. Let's read that again, verse 10. And he said, this is one of the three men, I will certainly return unto thee. Meaning I'm going to come back here. But listen what he said. The same thing Elijah said, according to the time of life. According to your life, Sarah. According to your life, Abraham. They say, when I return back here, Y'all going to be embracing your child. Watch this now. We can read all the way through verse 14. Verse 11 says, Now Abraham and Sarah were old and were stricken in age. I'm talking to somebody right now. They tell you, you cannot have children. You will never get married. Forget them. They, what is happening here? Listen to me. Even though this is on God's schedule for you and whatever went down in life and put obstacles in your way, this does not change the scheduling of God. This is what I'm saying to you. So, so listen to what the Bible says. After, after this fellow says, now look here, Sarah, you're going to have a baby. Now, according to what I've seen in the Spirit, according to your time of life, you're going to have a baby. But watch what the Bible says in verse 11. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old. So what the Bible is showing you now, all of the, the factors that were against them. But this means nothing because based on God's set time of favor, you will be having a child. Try that nonsense. Verse 11 says, Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am wax old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did, wherefore did Sarah laugh? saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child, which am I old? Verse 14. The guy says, Is anything too hard for the Lord? Listen, listen. At the appointed, sorry, at the time appointed, Lord, I don't think you all listen to this tonight, you know. You all listen to, look, focus, zoom in, zoom in on verse 14. Okay? Listen to what he said to Abraham. He says, is anything too hard for the Lord? That's a question. But well, watch what he says next. Because now he's reiterating in a different way of what he said in, in, verse, in verse 10. He said, at the time appointed. Let us sink in there a little bit. At the time appointed. Y'all up in it, it couldn't happen, Sarah and Abraham, when y'all was in your all 30s. It couldn't happen because it wasn't scheduled for then. It couldn't happen in your 40s. It couldn't happen in your 50s. It couldn't happen. The, the time that God had set based on his season, based on his time, based on his schedule. Talking nonsense. The listen to what it says. You know what an appointment is? It is a reserved time. 
It is a piece of time reserved for a specific event or person or thing. The guy said here in verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? He said, at the, uh, at the time appointed, I will return unto thee. Watch what he says again. According to the time of life, according to the scheduling when this baby will come forth, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Man, this guy ain't talking like he he pulling this out of a hat. This fella talking like he got, I mean, documents signed by the governor. He talking from me like, hey, like this, this going down. I ain't here to debate with you. I ain't here trying to figure out whether or not God nobody talking about. Based on what I am seeing, based on what God has revealed to me, based on your specific time schedule for your specific life, I see you having a child, Sarah. Yeah, you up in age. Yeah, your your period and stuff, you in menopause, and it ain't no chance of having a child that according to biology. But I'm telling you what the person who told me who created biology. Set time. Set time. You should get excited right now. There's a set time. You don't need no 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 profit to get you all frenzy up only to shake you down for a couple of dollars. No, you can get excited right here. Ain't nobody. Well, one thing with this program, you ain't got to worry about nobody shaking you down here. All right. So you could you could feel free to give a praise right now. Ain't gonna cost you a penny. Okay. Ain't no praise seed and resurrection seed garbage here. No, no, no. You could praise your Jesus in freedom because I'm giving you his word. He said to her, at the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the set time. The time that you're supposed to be having this child, I can be back here. God set time. I love this here. Let's go to Genesis 17. Let's go to the, to the, to the scripture just before that. Okay, now watch this. Genesis 17, and we're going to read from verse 20 to verse 21. I love this here. Genesis 17, verse 20 to 21. Listen to this now. Genesis 17, verse 20 to 21. All right? Okay, this is God speaking to Abraham about future events, right? So let's take it to verse... Let's take it to verse 20. Excuse me. Verse 20 says of Genesis 17, And as for Ishmael, this is God speaking, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. Listen to verse 21 of Genesis 17. But my covenant, my agreement, okay, will I establish with Isaac. Because that's the promised child. Even though you and Sarah go on mess around, okay, with Hagar and bring forth this Ishmael guy. That was not what I promised you. But watch what he says here now. But the covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee, this God speaking now, at the set time in the next year. Now remember, this is the scripture before the other scripture where the three men who came and now reiterate what God is telling them here. But what I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to show you there's a sequence of events where everyone is talking about these set periods and according to the timing of these people's lives, that there are things that are already put in place that they don't even know about. And that time is like a conveyor belt taking these people to their next appointment, taking to these people to their next time and season. What are you talking to tonight, man? Scripture. Now let's look at another scripture. Let's look at this 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 last scripture. Then we can wrap up right here. Let's look at Genesis 21. Genesis 21. Because we can see now some manifestation. Genesis 21. Okay? And we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 2. Now you see, God said in Genesis 17, hey, look here. There's a set time that Sarah's going to bring forth. Now God said in his boys to Abraham in, 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 in chapter 18, he gone cook up all kind of uh, uh, olive gardens and stuff for them. And they tell him, they say, now, okay, we're we getting ready to, 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 to see in the spirit now. And we ain't seeing no condos and cars and Mercedes. We see in what God put in place for you. And what we see here, according to the set times and season, I know y'all been trying for a while. And I know you don't bring forth a smell messing around here, but I see a son coming through your wife as God had covenant with you in Genesis 17. 
Genesis 21, beginning at verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Listen to verse 2 now. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age. But this is the part that I love. She did it at the set time of, of which God had spoken. Lord, I just thank you for your word. Listen, I finished tonight. I, I even, I, what time is this? It's 125. This is the earliest I were getting off tonight. I telling y'all right now, now if y'all ain't convinced, but this start on y'all, something wrong with y'all and y'all need deliverance. The scriptures are clear. I didn't add, I didn't take away. I read them for exactly uh, uh, what they're saying. And it is clear here. There is a set time. You, you cannot rush that time. You cannot put no pressure on God. I've, I've heard preachers pray, and I even did it before too when I was back there in, in those cages. Because the preacher does, I did it, and they say, oh, God, do it speedily, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, do it. Turn it around, Lord, in record time. Oh, God, do a Guinness World Book of Records miracle for Kevin Ewing right now. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I hear God say, I hate that here. Yeah? I hear God say he's going he's gonna to turn that thing around in record time for you. Oh, man, the speed of light. God, do it speed of light, Jesus. Uh-uh. Get out of here, boy. Set times. You can't put my Savior under no pressure. What do you think this is? What do you think you're dealing with? Set times. Get it in your head. You old hypocrite, you, you, you crook, get it in your head. Ain't nothing, no, what is a speedy turnaround? No, in the time that he is appointed, because in between that time, he is conditioning you. In between that time, he's training you. He's preparing you. He's, he's taking out of you what ain't supposed to be there and putting in you what's supposed to be there, conditioning you for the next season to your life according to the scheduling of your life. Don't let nobody tell you no nonsense. Don't let nobody tell you now, now, now that I done shared it with you, give me $50, sow a seed into my life. Give me a resurrection. Give me a, an accurate prophetic word seed. They are all thieves and liars and hypocrites. And, and listen, they are the most evil people ever. God said it is a set time. You can't change that. You can't speed it up. You can't slow it down. It's a set time. Now, whether you took the training or not, because the time coming, the time is coming. And all you went through, all the hell on the job, all the lowness you went through, God is preparing you for management. He's preparing you for elevation. But he says, now, in order for you not to be like where you came from, I had to put you through the stress. I had to show you what it's like on the receiving end. So I don't want you treating people like that when I make you the supervisor. When I cause you who don't have no degrees, but I'm going to make you the managing director. They don't even know how it's going to happen. But all the, the only degree you need is to be uh, vigilant in this current season of adversity, this current season of failure, this current season of depression. Know for sure that I am chiseling you into what I want you to be. So when I present you for the next season, you will reign and dominate in that season. Talking nonsense. I hope somebody listened to me tonight. There's a set time for your life. There's a God is going on the schedule of your life. He, said, he says, listen, Michael, Gabriel, any one of y'all, bring me the file for Kevin right now. Bring his file here for me. Let me see if he's on, let me see if he's on course. Is he teaching my people? Is he giving them the gospel? Please tell me he ain't begging them for money. Please tell me he ain't hustling them. Please tell me he isn't giving them an invoice if they, if he give them a word. Please tell me, please tell me he didn't become like the rest. No, 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 Jesus. No, God, he didn't do it. Okay, so what's the next schedule for his life? What we got for him next? Because I need you to go down there and prepare him for the next season of his life. God talking to somebody. It's a set time. The, 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 the angel said to Abram in verse 14 of Genesis 18, he said, at the appointed time. Oh, I love that, yeah? You know, what that does for me, hey, listen, I get chill bumps right now. I'm so excited. What that does for me, two things. Number one, nothing is forever. And I am living proof of that. I tell you, there are days that I thought I wouldn't make it through the night. There are days when I said, that doesn't make no sense living anymore. The, the life is nothing but sadness. But no, 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 Kevin. No, you don't, see, you don't get caught up in the moment because you must always look over the horizon. Because as long, the Bible says, wherever there is life, there is hope. 
There is hope for you. Why? Because there's an appointed time. There's an appointed season. That's already scheduling on God's calendar of events for your life. Let nobody talk for to you. I finished, man. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I bless you, Father God. We bless you. We honor you. We praise you tonight. And we praise you for this divine understanding, this divine revelation, Father God, that we don't become consumed in these current moments that may not seem uh, joyful for us, but we must look at them as preparation for the next stage of our lives, the next appointment, the next season, the next time. Father God, we pray and, and, and ask your forgiveness for every time we complain, not knowing how you do things. We, 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 we ask your forgiveness for murmuring. We ask your for forgiveness for being so ungrateful and, and complaining about now. And when we look back in the years past and see that what we have now, we didn't have then. And we prayed for what we have now, but now that we get it, we still complaining. Father, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for being so ungrateful, so selfish. So all we think about is ourselves, not knowing that you are conditioning us for a people, for a specific group to get your word out there, to encourage them. You are going to use our lives and what we go through like you've done for me to be transparent and tell the world what you've been through. Tell the world what your vices are. Your word says that they overcame by the blood of the lamb and their testimony. How would we have a testimony if we don't go through the times and appointed seasons of stress and hardship and poverty? Only for the great I am to pull us out after we are conditioned and now put us into a season of plenty. Father, forgive us. Forgive us for the ungrateful spirit. Forgive us for following these charlatans who training us to look at you as some kind of slot machine to put coins in and then you spit out blessings, but never putting us into the scriptures and teaching us the word and showing us how we must look at the scriptures and, and digest them and eat them and, and consume the word of God. No, they're not doing that. But there's a set time for them also. Father, we thank you for your word. There is hope in the word. There is hope in the word of God that nothing is forever. Absolutely nothing. Life is all about cycles. Life is all about seasons. Life is all about appointments and set times. Life is, is, is a revolving door. And the quicker we understand that and embrace ourselves and just strap in, God, what is on the horizon? What do you have set next for us? I thank you, Lord, because you are a proactive God. I thank you, God, because you are all-knowing. I'm thanking you because you know there are times during our appointed times that we would be delayed. However, whether it's through some marrying the wrong person, whether it's through uh, being connected with somebody who would, would pull us back in life. But the mere fact that we got through that period, according to your word, you say, okay, now that you're back on track, I'm about to restore you now. I'm going to restore you like I have promised, according to Joel 2 and 25. And I said to you, I will restore unto you the years, the canker worm, the caterpillar, Lord, what the locust has taken away. So I don't care how old you are right now. Look at Sarah. Sarah was almost 100 years old. Sarah had stopped seeing her, period. She could not get pregnant. But that had nothing to do with the set time of God on her life. So what am I saying to those or those probably experiencing the same thing? God has set a time for you. Yes, you are delayed. Yes, you've been denied. Yes, you've been set back. But that's not the end of life. The mere fact that you are still living, the scripture says that where there is life, there is hope. And our hope should be embedded in our Lord and, Jesus, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, and it's all about his set time. So we should be praying, Father, reveal your set time to us. Father, just how you used to encourage Kevin when he was going through and you was giving him dreams. You were giving him excerpts of his future. Just like with Joseph, God. Joseph way back then as a 17-year-old who brothers despised him. Okay? But you were, you were giving him excerpts and glimpses of his set times of the future. You showed him where he would be a leader. You showed him where he would be ruling and dominating over his mommy, daddy, brothers, sisters, all of them. You showed him. It didn't look so then. But it did not eradicate what you have etched in stone, which was the set time for his life. Didn't it come to pass? Didn't he become the leader, the second in charge of Egypt, a country would who despised the Hebrew people? 
That's how we know it's God, because he's going to make it happen in, 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 in these uncanny circumstances where they're asking you for a degree, where they're asking you for 10 years experience. God says that it's because it's your set time. I don't care what they're asking you for. I am going to put you in that position. So, Father, we thank you. We give you glory well in advance. For Now that we understand, Father, I don't know what the set time is for, for tomorrow. It might even be some bad times. But I'm not going to reject it because I understand that even though it's bad times, it's preparing me for the good times. So, Father, we appreciate what you are doing. We thank you that we have uh, judged you foolishly. But for the most part, because of these jokers who claim to represent you, telling us everything except what your word says. So we pray for them. We pray that they would get saved before their time run out and find themselves in a Christless hell. So, Father, we bless you. We honor you. We praise you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, folks, that's part one. Two, there is a set time for your deliverance. Now, this only scratching the surface of what we can deal with tomorrow and on Thursday. So, listen, I pray that you would share this just to encourage someone who feel that they're the end of their rope. They're, see, they're saying that on their limited imagination. They have no idea what the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has set on their time schedule for them. So encourage them to watch this and to even follow in the remaining two days as we continue with this series. There is a set time for deliverance. So God bless you until we meet again tomorrow at 845.